Hello and welcome to my JRPG devlog. I don't have a title card, so this is the best I can give you right now, but uh, maybe at some point I have a better one. Alright, so uh, the way I started this project is by basically copy-pasting Action Commando and then going backwards, uh, removing all the features that I do not need. And uh, as you can see, everything is blueprint-based, and what I'm doing is I delete all the functionality from all these objects that I've created and um, deleting all the stuff that I don't need and then I reconnect everything so it basically works again. So uh, my main f focus right now is to get the game, you know, get all the functionality out that I don't want and need and then make it work again, pretty much. And the reason I'm doing this instead of going uh, the usual route of you know creating a new project from scratch and then you know adding all the f functionality as I need it that would take much much longer trust me um, it's kind of like when you're moving places um, the tiny stuff that you don't even think about usually takes up the most space and requires the most time of your in and effort you know while moving the big stuff is like the obvious things like yeah obviously i need my couch but then you have like uh, you know boxes and boxes full of tiny little stuff that you didn't even remember that you had so basically this is the exact same thing so one other thing you should know is that the Unreal Engine doesn't really handle deleting stuff all that well. It has uh, a lot of problems with that, um, you, even crashes sometimes. So the workaround I found is by going into, you know, I delete something and then I see the Unreal Engine shows me where this uh, thing I want to delete is referenced. So I go in into every single of these references and I manually delete all the references by hand and then I, you know, tidy up everything so it works again and uh, then, uh, you know, I can, I can go back and actually delete that thing that I wanted to get rid of. My goal for this week was basically just to get the game back up and running. I didn't really care about any kinds of functionality. This is stuff that I can worry about once I get started on the actual gameplay uh, and, you know, the, getting my ideas into the game. But for now, I only wanted to get the project up and running again. So I didn't get any more warnings or error messages or like Unreal Engine says like this is broken and you have to look at this stuff and here's a broken reference and whatever. So all I wanted to do is just press on the play button and just see a blank screen and what you can see here is pretty much exactly that so mission accomplished for this week and for the next week i want to work on actually adding the new gameplay since this new game is going to be a turn-based RPG, that means that the combat is pretty much um, the player looking at fancy effects while enemies are dying. So uh, a bunch of time was spent looking through some of these effects that I still have um, that I didn't use in uh, any other game so far. And uh, some of these are of great quality and they look amazing and I can't wait to put them to good use. Um, you know, some of them I probably want to change or, you know, but uh, a lot of them are good as they are and I can pretty much um, you know at least use them as a base to make my own you know change the color change the textures um, changing textures alone makes a lot of difference so um, this was also something that I did this week Besides working on my own game, the other thing I did this week was do a bunch of research on JRPGs that are beloved by many fans or have like unique mechanics that um, a lot of players just enjoyed that I didn't even know existed. So one game I played a lot this month was Final Fantasy X2, which I think is very very enjoyable, uh, even though it didn't really sell all that much. Don't really know why, I don't really care. But to me, it was very enjoyable. Uh, one thing I've noticed is that um, Square Enix went into a more casual route with this game and the combat can be pretty much played with just holding down one single button. It's kind of weird at first and I was really put off. I thought like this is dumbing down the gameplay. But uh, soon I realized that this is making the combat much and more, you know, it's more l laid back and you can just enjoy the graphics flashing on your screen. And sometimes, you know, very rarely you actually have to, you know, wake up and think about what you're doing in case, you know, when you're facing a boss or something like that. So 
Uh, I kind of like this approach where, you know, a, a vast majority of combat can be just, you know, it's just there to, you know, grind and whatever. But sometimes you just have to stop and think. Another game I looked into this week was Bravely Default by Square Enix. Uh, this game is uh, very, very similar to all their other final, you know, old school Final Fantasy, like turn-based games. Um, however, they added a unique twist on the combat this time, which is uh, the Brave or Default mechanic. So if you Brave, that pretty much means that you take your actions in advance. So uh, you have um, brave points, I think it's called in this game, uh, every round, but um, you can take these points in advance and go into a minus uh, on your points, pretty much. And then you take your actions in advance and you act uh, four times in one turn. However, if your attacks um, fail and the enemy survives, that pretty much leaves you open to get like, slaughtered. So it's a really interesting tactical mechanic. Um, the other thing you can do is to default, which means that you, um, you block and you defend, and uh, that saves you one point. So you can either you know, take them in advance or save them up for later. It's a great mechanic, uh, which gives you a lot of tactical variety, especially in boss fights. Uh, where even bosses can use the same mechanic against you. Uh, so they have also added a lot of, like, you know, they're playing around with this mechanic. For example, there is an ability one enemy uses which is called Revenge. So when, whenever you deal, I think, a, a certain amount of damage to them, they get one point extra next round. So um, it makes you think a lot. And uh, yeah, I, I, I really love this dynamic, uh, this awesome mechanic. And uh, let's just say... You know, I feel uh, highly inspired uh, to use it in my own game. So finally, I want to show you uh, a little mock-up of how I envision the gameplay of the actual game, uh, which is uh, divided in two aspects. The first one is the exploration part. As you can see here, I've just taken the train station uh, from a few videos ago. It never found any place in any of my games so far, but uh, whatever, this is just a demonstration. So the way this works is that uh, you're in this exploration mode, basically, and you can select uh, certain objects that you see for example, you could select the door and go through or pick up the herbs and, you know, put it in the, your inventory. Or maybe you can, you know, rifle through some stuff, find a desk or activate a switch or whatever. And uh, the way you would um, move through this uh, world pretty much is like the same way how you move through Google Maps. So when you're in first person mode in that, you can select certain like icons or whatever that are in the world. And when you select them, you move the camera through the world that way. The second mock-up I want to show you is for the combat. So this is Mason, the first sprite I've drawn for this game. Um, Mason is a recurrent character from Town of Machine, in case you have seen that game or played it. Um, Mason was one of my favorite characters of that game, uh, you know, in combination with some other characters who may or may not be recurring in this game as well. Um, but in this, you know, combat scenario, as you can see on the left side, you see four characters of your combat party and on the right side you know in this example it's bizarro mason i guess um who are the enemies um, they will attack you in two rows so there is a, ta a tactical layer to that um because the front row can pretty much block attacks for the back row so if you want to attack certain enemies in the back you first have to defeat the enemies that are standing in front of them um, or there are some abilities that can uh, directly attack the back row in this example it's very very cramped i'm not very happy with this but again it was just a you know five minute mock-up that i uh, threw together so bear that in mind uh, but yeah the combat will have some tactical variety to it all right, and there you have it, my very first JRPG devlog. Um, yeah, this was my very first time making a video in this kind of style. Uh, I kind of recorded all kinds of stuff that I did throughout the week, and uh, right now I'm adding it to editing it together. So um, again, it's a very new thing to, for me, and if you liked it, please leave me leave me a comment or give me a like or whatever you know YouTube algorithms and stuff. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun uh, doing this and I want to keep doing this um, for the next week and, you know, 
every week basically and uh, again you know if you have any kinds of suggestions whatever give me a comment so i thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next video